Honorable the Chief Justice of India and his companion judges of the Supreme Court of India. I seek indulgence to mention this matter which is to be heard by the seven judges bench regarding the correct interpretation of Article 105. I congratulate Supreme Court that it has taken a decision to revisit the judgment delivered in the matter of P. V. Narsimha Rao v. CBI. Infamously called JMM bribery case. I seek this indulgence to mention this matter firstly because there are threats to my life and liberty and secondly because I am in New York and cannot appear in person. With great sense of satisfaction not with any sense of ego or arrogance, I wish to submit that more than 25 years back when this judgment was delivered, I authored an article which was published by the Journal of Bar Association of India, the Indian advocate. The illustrious editorial board consisting of noted and illustrious jurist of the country, Shri Fali Nariman, Soli Sorabji, RKP Shankar Das, Anil Divan, Ashok Desai, Lalit Basin, G. L. Sanghi. They approved this article and published it in their magazine along with the articles of Justice Sandra Day of US, Justice Daniel Latif, Chief Justice I. Mahmood, Shri P. P. Rao, and Fali Nariman. In this article, MPs as super citizens, 25 years back, I wrote few lines which I wish to mention. It may sound strange, but the fact is that as per the law settled by the Supreme Court of India in P. V. Narsimha Rao v. CBI, that is JMM bribery case. If a member of parliament kills someone in respect of anything said or any vote given by him in the parliament, he cannot be even prosecuted for that murder. So this was a mistake committed by Supreme Court of India, the constitution bench. And I wrote an article on this that 105 was never meant to give immunity. I further said that the minority judgment delivered by Justice S.C. Agarwal for himself and on behalf of Justice A.S. Anand held that the member of parliament does not enjoy immunity under article 105 from being prosecuted before a criminal court for an offence involving offer or acceptance of bribe for the purpose of speaking or by giving his vote in parliament is based upon sound reasoning and is correct judgment. But the fact remains that the law of the land as it stands today confers a super citizen status on a member of parliament who enjoys immunity against any proceedings in any court in respect of anything said or any vote given by him in the parliament even if he commits murder. 
in this article i further wrote that there is no dispute and it has been well recognized world over that a full and free debate is the essence of parliamentary democracy in the case of tk jain versus ns reddy 1971 1scr 612 the supreme court clearly observed that it is of the essence of parliamentary system of government that people's representatives should be free to express themselves without fear or legal consequences i studied the law and researched the law word over in this regard and further wrote but most of the countries in the world treat corruption and bribery by members of parliament as a criminal offence rather than as a breach of privilege in australia as far as back in 1875 the supreme court of new south wales held that an attempt to bribe a member of legislative assembly in order to influence his vote was a criminal offence misdemeanor at common law a view similar to that of chief justice of australia was approved in canada in the case of r versus bunting where in the chief justice wilson held and i quote it is to my mind a proposition very clear that this court has jurisdiction over the offence of bribery as at the common law in a case of this kind where a member of legislative assembly is concerned either in the giving or in the offering to give a bribe or in the taking of it or in respect of any of his duties as a member of that assembly i and court similarly in the united states burger chief justice speaking for six members of supreme court in brewster's case in regard to a senator who had been charged with accepting bribes in exchange for promises related to official acts while a congressman took the view that the immunity of speech or debate clause were not written into the constitution simply for personal or private benefit of the members of congress but to protect the integrity of the legislative in england also in r versus curie beckler j held that a member of parliament against whom there is a prima facie case of corruption should be immune from prosecution in the court of law is to my mind an unacceptable proposition at the present time i do not believe it to be the law the learned judge in fact quoted lord salomon speaking in the house of lords thus and i quote to my mind equity before the law is one of the pillars of freedom to say that immunity from criminal proceedings against anyone who tries to bribe a member of parliament and any member of parliament who accepts the bribe stems from the bill of rights is possibly a serious mistake unquote sir i think my lord that the minority judgment rightly observed and held that it would indeed be ironic if a claim for immunity from prosecution founded on the need to ensure independence of members of parliament in exercising their right to speak or cast their vote in parliament could be put forward by a member who has bartered away his independence by agreeing to speak or vote in a particular manner in lieu of illegal gratification that has been paid or promised by claiming the immunity such a member would only be seeking a license to indulge in such conduct my lord in my view as i mentioned in this article the majority view now these are the flaws the majority view did not consider a very important aspect that the parliamentary democracy is a part of basic structure of the constitution 
and an interpretation of provisions of Article 105 within Dacke 2, which would enable a member of parliament to claim immunity from prosecution in a criminal court for an offence of bribery in connection with anything said by him or a vote given by him in parliament and thereby such member is above the law, would not only be repugnant to healthy functioning of parliamentary democracy, but would also be subversive of rule of law, which is an essential part of the basic structure of the constitution. I think this was a grave error committed by the majority judgment. It is really inconceivable that framers of the constitution intended to provide special protection to the members of parliament against their misdeeds or act of constituting crime. The object was only to give them freedom of speech. So therefore, the interpretation given by the majority judgment is bad on this count also. The majority judgment also failed to comprehend that the interpretation which demolishes the basic structure of the constitution would also further dampen the spirits of the citizens who are to live with this feeling that members of parliament henceforth are super citizens. The majority view, my lord, in my view, also failed to consider that the words, I quote, subject to the provisions of constitution. So 105 starts with this. Subjects to the provisions of the constitution appearing in article 105, number one, clearly indicate that spirit of the article regarding freedom of speech in parliament. These provisions also include, now when this is subject to other provisions, so these provisions also include parliamentary democracy and rule of law. Parliamentary democracy can never be true democracy if the members are immune to commit any crime or any dishonest act in respect of speech made or vote given in the parliament. The majority judgment interpretation is wrong and bad in law for yet another reason. That is because Article 105 within bracket 2 contains the words in parliament. I quote, in within code I say in parliament, it contains the words in parliament. And so therefore, immunity is only in respect of anything said or vote by given by him in parliament and not with respect to anything or any crime which he has done outside the parliament. Even if that is in respect of anything said or vote given by him in parliament, to my mind, any other interpretation is against the spirit of the constitution. Your Lordship, I humbly submit and I mentioned 25 years back, imagine good quarter century back, I wrote and I reiterate today, we only hope that a judgment based upon wrong interpretation of law, an interpretation against the spirit of article 105 and also against the basic structure of the constitution that is true democracy, true parliamentary democracy and rule of law is reviewed by the apex court as early as possible. So my submission, Your Lordship, is that 25 years back I requested the Supreme Court. In a journal, as I mentioned at the course of a repetition, I say, being edited by noted jurist of the country, of the world rather, I say. I am happy to know that yes, today Supreme Court has woken up to correct this error. I humbly submit that all the miseries in the country today, 100 crore not getting basic needs, one square meal a day, clean drinking water, primary health, primary education, unemployment, women's safety, we are at the bottom, hunger index, we are at the bottom, media index, we are at the bottom, happiness index, we are at the bottom. Your Lordship, I humbly submit that we have still not achieved the freedom for which Bhagat Singh and his other freedom fighters sacrifice their lives 
and the main reason for this is corruption and this judgment which is still unfortunately valid today even after 25 years of my writing an article needs to be reviewed as early as possible on a lighter note i say that since the chief justice was in my college and i was couple of years senior to him that means i am senior to all the judges in fact and without naming anyone few of the judges were my junior in high court couple of them were my assisting counsels in different matters so all alumni all institutions all good colleges they respect their alumni so as a senior citizen as a senior i am not asking any favor that because i am alumni and senior to all of you therefore you give me special relief but i am only seeking this indulgence that since there are threats to my life and since to life and liberty i say i am in new york i keep on shuffling because of threat but nowadays i am in new york i humbly request that this mentioning of mine may be considered at least this article of mine i would try to file the intervention if it is on board before the hearing it is fine if it is not at least i'll send that article your lordship can request anyone uh, mr lalit basin or anybody from the bar association fali nariman sir can direct them to send this article or put this article on record i would file intervention and would seek indulgence that if some time is fixed for me for just i need just half an hour to argue this point and make my submissions if any fixed date is given because i can be up whole night one night two night but i can't be in queue for many days <laughs> so if some fixed time is given i would be grateful if fixed time cannot be given i humbly request that this article may be considered which was approved by noted jurist of the world my name is ashok aroda my email is ashok aroda 2310@gmail.com thank you jai hind